pleasure to meet you with another laboratory practice named test on three phase induction motor in this practical we are going to learn about the basic theory of three phase induction motor such as the working principle equivalent circuit of three phase induction motor determination of equivalent circuit parameters and torque speed characteristics then we are going to determine practically the equivalent circuit parameters and we obtain readings to stretch the torque speed curve all right as final year undergraduates i'm sure that all of you have seen three phase induction motors we can find them in many industrial applications like pumps resin machines lathe machines grinding machines conveyors flour mills compressors and so on this is the reason the three phase induction motor is known as the workhorse in the industry for a long time three phase induction motor was used as constant speed motor but now with the help of power electronics it can be used as a variable speed motor the major features of three phase induction motor compared to its closest competitor dc motor are high efficiency compactness high speed capability ease of cooling high reliability high overload margin which is called high roughness low cost and low weight we then found two types of induction motors the swirl page motor and bone rotor motor now let's understand the working principle of three phase induction motor when a three phase voltage of constant frequency is applied to stator winding a rotating magnetic field is created in the air gap this rotating magnetic field rotates at the synchronous speed you can derive the synchronous speed using this equation this rotating magnetic field is sensed by the three phase winding in the rotor and that's induced with the balanced three phase voltage the rotor winding is closed using n rings therefore an induced three phase voltage creates a three phase current this rotor current reacts with the air gap flux and produces a torque to rotate One of the major observations of induction motor is that an induction motor can never attain at or above the synchronous speed. If the rotor speed is an R and synchronous speed is an S, then speed of the magnetic field sensed by the rotor to create a rotor torque is an S minus an R. This speed is known as slip speed. The ratio between slip speed and synchronous speed is known as slip therefore the relationship between rotor speed and synchronous speed can be obtained as follows if we observe the per phase equivalent circuit of three phase induction motor we can see it is very similar to the transformer equivalent circuit in this circuit all parameters are taken per phase vs is the stator voltage r1 is the stator resistance r2 is the rotor resistance its one is the stator leakage reactance its two is the rotor leakage reactance its n is the magnetizing reactance rc is the polos reactance e1 is the stator emf e2 is the standstill rotor emf is is the supply current i1 is the torque producing current component i0 is the no load current i2 is the rotor current n1 to n2 is the effective turns ratio of stator winding and rotor winding we then restage the per phase equivalent circuit referring the rotor side to the stator this is the general per phase equivalent circuit for three phase induction motor Here at stu dash is the rotor standstill rethage reactance referred to the stator and it can be obtained using this expression R2 dash is the rotor resistance referred to the stator and it can be obtained using this expression Then we are doing several tests to find out the values of these parameters Under the determination of equivalent circuit parameters first test is DC resistance test You can see the circuit arrangement on the screen. 
So the stator resistance R1 can be obtained using the meter readings of DC voltmeter and ammeter. Then the no load test. This is similar to the open circuit test in a transformer. You can see the test circuit. In this test, the motor is allowed to rotate freely without a load by applying the rated voltage at rated frequency. Now since the rotor rotates without a mechanical load, the equivalent circuit is simplified as you see on the screen. Since we have used 2 watt meter method to measure the power, the perfect power can be obtained as follows. Then, observing the simplified circuit, you can come up with this equation. Here, R E Q is the resultant resistance which is responsible in producing W power. I is the ammeter reading and V is the per phase voltage. So, divide the voltmeter reading by root 3 to have V. So finally, with these equations, we can have an expression to its 1 plus its M. In the block rotor test, the rotor is blocked. That means it does not rotate. Here we are using the same circuit as in no load test. But what meters are connected somewhat differently to have a better accuracy. In this test, we are supplying the rated motor current while blocking the rotor. Since the rotor is blocked, there will not be a magnetizing reactance and the Colos resistance is also a small value. So we can neglect the parallel part of equivalent circuit and as the rotor is blocked, slip value is 1. Now the equivalent circuit has been simplified as follows. Per phase power W can be obtained like this. Then by observing the per phase simplified equivalent circuit, we can come up with this equation. So R plus R2 dash is equal to W over I squared. Here I is the ammeter reading. Then adding the reactances, we can write this equation. Here V is the per phase voltage. You can determine this value dividing the voltmeter reading by root 3. So finally, we can have an expression for its 1 plus its 2 dash. But still, we cannot determine its 1 and its 2 dash. So IEEE test procedure suggests the following distribution of its 1 and its 2 dash. So now, you can determine all the equivalent circuit parameters. Then, let's observe the torque speed characteristic curve. As you see in the torque speed curve, the induced torque is zero at synchronous speed, since there will not be a relative rotational speed between rotor and rotating magnetic field at that speed. The curve is nearly linear between no load, that is, at synchronous speed, and full load. In this range, the rotor resistance is much greater than the reactance, so the rotor current and torque increases linearly with the slip. There is a maximum possible torque that can't be exceeded. This is called the pullout torque. The starting torque of motor is slightly higher than the full load torque. If the rotor is driven faster than synchronous speed, it will run as a generator converting mechanical power to electric power. Now we know the theory behind this laboratory practice. So let's do the tests, which we learned experimentally. Come with me to the electrical machines lab. This is the induction motor that we are going to test in this experiment. Here you can observe the nameplate data. The end terminals of these three wires are indicated here. Here you can observe the connection diagram. He said it's why are short circuited to make the star connection common point. And UVW are the other terminals of star connected motor windings. First, the DC resistance test. Observe this circuit well. So here you can see the positive and negative terminals of DC supply. 
The blue color wire connected to plus terminal is connected to one terminal of 100 ohms resistor, which is the current limiting resistor. The other terminal is connected to the DC ammeters plus terminal. The minus terminal is connected to a terminal called U. Here, he said its Y terminals are short circuited to have the common point of star connection. U, V, W are the end terminals as you observe in the circuit. V is connected to the minus terminal of DC supply. With these blue wires, U and V are also connected to a DC voltmeter. See the plus and minus terminal connections. Here, 30 range is the plus terminal. Now, switch on the DC supply. You can see this bulb indicator which shows that DC supply is on. Then, check the ammeter and voltmeter readings and write them in your observations sheet. Then, the no load test. First, observe the test circuit. Small changes in voltmeter connections have been made to have proper accuracy. Now, these are the input terminals of this three-phase variant. These input terminals are connected to the transformer binding ends in here, here, and here. The output terminal of phase 1 is connected to the common point of W1 wattmeter. The other point of current coil is connected to the ammeter. Ammeter is connected to point U. Then the output terminal of phase 3 is connected to the common point of wattmeter 2. The other terminal of Current coil is connected to point W. The blue color wire, which is connected to phase 2, is directly connected to point B. As you can observe in the circuit, two ends of wattmeter voltage coils are connected through this red color wire. These are the common point connections. This voltmeter measures the line to line voltage and is connected to U and V. U, V, and W are the motor terminals. Now, rotate the variant dial and make the initial value as 25 in the dial. Then switch on the supply. Then rotate the variant dial slowly until the line to line voltage shows a reading of 230 volts, the rated voltage.
then take the readings of voltmeter, ammeter, W1 and W2 voltmeters, and write them in your observations sheet. Make sure to observe the ranges we connected. Also, the multiplying factors of voltmeters. Now, the third test, block throttle test. Observe this circuit well. So, this is the setup. Keep the entire circuit arrangement as same as in no load test, but change only the connections of voltmeter 1, like this as shown in the circuit. Now, switch on the power supply and you can see the rotor is blocked using this metal rod. Now, rotate the various dial slowly until the emitter shows 8 amperes current, which is the rated current. Then, take the voltmeter, W1 wattmeter and W2 wattmeter readings and write them in your observations sheet. Don't forget to multiply the wattmeter reading by its multiplying factor. Then, using the readings of DC resistance test, no load test, and block rotor test, calculate the equivalent circuit parameters of three phase induction motor. Assume that we used a class A motor. Then, we are moving to obtain readings for torque speed characteristic curve. This is the circuit that we are going to construct for experiment. So this is the DC motor that we are using. This is the torque gauge. Here this point and this point are the armature winding terminals. And this point and this point are the field winding terminals. Field winding terminals are connected to the DC supply in here. This is the variable resistor R1 shown in the circuit. If you look at the armature terminals, one terminal is connected to the ammeter and the ammeter is connected to the rheostat and rheostat is connected to the other terminal of armature winding. These are the input terminals of three-phase variate. They are connected to here, to here, and to here. Phase 1 output terminal is connected to point U of motor terminal through the emitter. So this is the emitter. Point V is directly connected to phase 2 output terminal. Phase 3 output terminal is directly connected to point W. 
A voltmeter is connected to points U and V to measure line-to-line -line voltage. Now, before starting the practical, make sure that these two dials should be in zero position. This dial is used for fine adjustment of R2. Now, switch on the DC supply. Then, rotate the variant dial until the line-to-line -line voltage shows 100 volts reading. Note that still we haven't loaded the DC motor. Now look at the speed shown in tapometer and the torque. Then decrease the R2 resistor and you can see armature current is increasing. You can see the speed has been reduced and torque has been increased since now the induction motor is more loaded by DC motor. Now, see when R1 is decreased, armature current increases. and speed is gradually decreasing. Then see how the torque and armature current increases when you decrease the R1 resistance. After the experiment, rotate this R2 dial to the initial position and switch off the DC circuit breaker. Then rotate the variant dial to zero. These are some practical readings obtained when this experiment was carried out. The radius of torque gauge is 17 cm. There is an initial error of minus 1.1 kg in torque gauge. We always kept the induction motor input voltage at 100 volts in every reading. Plot the torque speed curve using this data. Then, as for discussion, do the calculations and give descriptive answers to the following. So, we have come to the end of the practical. We encourage you to search more about three-phase induction motors and come up with innovative ideas. Thank you for watching.